Hi, Jason. Thanks, Hello. Thanks for being here to talk about the Oracle AI playbook for business leaders. No other place I'd rather be. I thought oh. you'd have like a little sleeve with the plays on it. Oh. You know? Like a like, little, you know. Like I was a rookie quarterback. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, you know, Omaha, Omaha, something like that. I actually think I need actually the plays on my arm. I just, or do you think I need the coach stocking to be in the head? Well, we're going to find out. Okay, we're going to find out. I have Connor Salian, so I'll just be getting the calls that way. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, well, we are here all week to talk about AI and cloud and the innovations we're making in it, but I want to just roll this all the way back. Yep. What um, what are we seeing out of this kind of AI wave and compared to other technology breakthroughs in previous years? This is a, it's an amazing time in the in the tech industry with AI coming to fruition now. Mm -hmm. You know, when Chat B GPT comes out, it passes the Turing test, which is sort of a seminal moment. But if you think back over the last 40, 50 years, it's not like we haven't been working on AI, right? Machine learning advancements, everything that we've been doing in many ways has led to this moment, right? This is not something that just started in the last two years. Right. The, the thing about technology changes, they're very foundational. They build upon each other. You plateau and then you make a leap. So we're seeing now the underlying technical innovations give us that opportunity to make that leap, which obviously then brings great promise of AI. Yeah, I think two years ago was when most people's eyes were opened up to this exciting wave we're on now. It's still kind of hard to prognosticate, but what impact do you expect AI to have on business and the economy? Well, when you look over the years and you think about mainframe computers going to mini computers and the client server PC revolution, and then the internet era and the Netscape browser being that seminal moment for that part of time, Web 1.0, Web 2.0, mobile, SaaS, cloud. Each of these has brought some level of productivity growth to a corporation and ultimately in terms of how you measure GDP impact. Right. I think what we're seeing now with AI is the seeds of that are being planted so that in the next five, 10 years, you should see commensurate increases in productivity. I mean, that's how you will measure it. Uh, Gartner had an interesting study where they were surveying their customers and something like 60, 70% of their customers thought that AI would have a greater than 6% increase on productivity. Hmm. And you guys in the audience, you might be saying like, oh, 6%, what's that? Yeah. Well, you know, GDP growth is running at a couple percent, right. right? Nominal GDP growth might be six, but with inflation, real GDP, 2%. So you're talking about a productivity increase that could be three times the rate of real GDP. That is like massive implication on the global economy. So we're here to talk about the Oracle AI playbook for business leaders, but first, what is most challenging for businesses when it comes to adopting AI? I think right now, most companies are trying to find that spot where they can take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. um, if you look across an organization, I think there's a lot of low hanging fruit in terms of routine work processes that can be benefit from automation. Mm -hmm. right? We've Packaged applications today might be 30, 40% of a company's application environment with another remainder being custom built. So there's a lot of manual, one-off, handoff workarounds that are in place in most companies. Mm -hmm. Lots that lives in spreadsheets, things like that. So I think there's some really easy places to go find ways to pull that into packaged applications today. Um. And what about when it comes to kind of the change around adopting these processes, like operationally speaking, what principles should be prioritized? I say this is where some of it is just old school blocking and tackling, which is people process automation. A lot of what we've done in corporate world is we build our org structures around these processes. Mm -hmm. And I think with the AI, you have the opportunity to unbundle and break these down. Mm. So instead of having micro processes that support the limitations in either custom built or packaged applications, you now can actually rethink about end-to-end -end automation, right? And so the micro processes lead to micro jobs, lead to micro functions, lead to micro departments, which is a ton of cost. Right. So if you go back to what I said about the productivity benefit, if you can unwind that, you should be able to make your business run better than before. Yeah. That's the hope. Yeah. And I think you can do it. Absolutely. Well, let's bring it a little closer to home. How do we at Oracle help people leverage AI functionality? Yeah, it's it, one of, the, one of the, the blessings at Oracle is that we have a huge suite, right? We, have, we've, we do applications 
database infrastructure, which then makes it a little hard sometimes to pick where do you get started, yeah. right? right? So what I, what I think about from how we power AI transformation, first you start with data, right? The data is the most mission critical, most important real estate that the corp corporation owns, any corporation owns. So we're bringing AI to data with the advancements in Oracle 23 AI. So core robust data platform, natively built AI for the core technologies, vector, RAG, it's all in there. So the applications that you can build inherently gonna be smarter, better, faster. So that's one area. So we bring AI to data. The second thing is we're doing some incredible work with Oracle Cloud Infrastructure of infusing AI into the platform, making it part of what we do and enabling the AI models to run better, faster, cheaper than anyone else on OCI. So we've announced obviously a lot of interesting things with some of the biggest AI companies in the world running natively on, on Oracle Cloud. That's gonna continue, but that's a huge piece. But I think what's different is we're also enabling this in a multi-cloud environment. So you can take that data, you run it on Oracle, but you can distribute that cloud, that Oracle Cloud with Oracle Database to other clouds. So you can run it obviously within Microsoft Azure data centers. You can run it in Google Cloud data centers. And now you can run it in AWS data centers. Mm -hmm. So now we have the ability to give our customers choice. They can have the AI with their data, but run it securely with great unit economics in the cloud yeah. that they choose. So that's powerful. Yeah. Then as you get into packaged applications, Fusion Suite embeds AI everywhere. We're doing a lot with industry. You know, we call it applied AI. You heard Mike Cecilia talk about all sorts of different interesting use cases, but I think what you take away out of that is new business models, new customer experiences, right? Those, those last mile industry applications get much smarter and better for those customers. So it really spans data to cloud infrastructure, to the horizontal applications, to then the industry specific capability. We saw some great examples and demonstrations and Juan's keynote even using generative AI to write applications. You and I are gonna be developers. That's right, I've, after all, I have been waiting all my life. I, as a young boy, I remember <laughs> you were telling me, you were skipping rocks and you're like, one day I'm gonna be a coder and today is the day. I can just speak English and yes. SQL statements will come out. Little <laughs> Java code gets- Little Fritz would be proud <laughs> yeah. of what, what yeah. you're able to do today. That's right, I, didn't, I couldn't even have dreamt of the apex. Yes. <laughs> How does this touch the analytics well, I think it's, it's an interesting question because analytics, we use it, we see it in everything we do in business, right? You see it in consumer. I mean, fantasy sports is built on analytics, right? right. In terms of forecasting, who should you play as your WRT yeah. if you're a fantasy sports fan, right? So th this, this pervasiveness of analytics is so interesting in that it, it's, it's something that we see, and in many cases, we just embed into our daily work. I think that's what's gonna be interesting with our analytics capabilities. It's everywhere in our products. Yeah. It's built into the things we do. And I think you're gonna see a shift from analytics being, hey, this is what the score was of last quarter to here's what we think the score will be in the coming quarter if you do these three things. And then then you take action on it, right? So it's a, it's a from to of, a little bit, a little bit more of a reporting and predictive to how do you actually tell the future? How can you, how can you use it to make much more informed and intelligent decisions? All right. And I, I mean, I wish that was with me last weekend during the games, but I mean, you can see it in business, being able to predict demand, being able to predict supply. I thought you were talking about being in Las Vegas. Yeah, being able, well, being here since Sunday. At right, the game. right. No, I, no. that game. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't know okay. if you know this, but in between every segment, Kendall runs out and I do slots. So does oh, I thought you went to the sport. No, okay. No, no, no I'm not sports betting. You made the call in the right. Michigan. I know, right? Exactly. That would be. Is that why you bet against Michigan this weekend? Good for you. Yeah, I did. I did. So you know. We're, we're, we've got, we've got Connor in our back pocket. We're hitting the slots with him and we're making calls here on Oracle TV, which is great. You're going to alienate all the Michigan fans, by the way. I know. I, <laughs> that's going to be so, so upset. They're like, no, I didn't. I'm betting it's you gonna get Ohio. Worse, it's going to get worse when they lose to USC in a couple of weeks. Exactly. Oh, oh, like model. oh model. Model. Well, look at that. Wow. Fight on. Um, okay. To bring us back to what we're oh, talking about. Okay. <laughs> so, what are some of the most interesting things that you're seeing with AI right now? I... I've got two, I'll give you two examples. So one, 
I really like what we're doing in Fusion in terms of the narrative reporting within the financials. Mm -hmm. As a former Wall Street analyst, I, I can't help but think how cool it is to actually have your, your, your filing generated from AI yeah. using the core technology from our OCI team to enable that to happen so you can generate the, the narrative around your quarterly performance. Right. I think that's super cool, very interesting. Um, the second one, I'll, I'll give you a little inside baseballer since we've been using the football analogy. I, say. I know. Um, we're using a lot of AI right now internally around account planning to help our sellers become smarter. Mm. How do we help them understand at a particular customer what's the right thing we should be talking about based on what they've used, based on their application usage, maybe based on their data profile? What should we make a recommendation on? And so we make our sellers smarter. They're more relevant to their customers. They're making ideas and suggestions about things they, be, they should be doing in their business. And, I, and without using AI, I don't know how anyone could process that volume of information. So I think those are two very interesting use cases. Absolutely. We touched on this a little bit earlier, but I think in these last couple of years, maybe even longer, it's like, well, how do I get started? What should I do first? What advice, though, in general, do you have for businesses that really want to get the most out of it? Yeah. I, I can, I'll speak for ourself. I mean, we, we look across our business. Uh, there are so many areas for us to go in terms of where we can apply the technology, but we picked one to start with, right? We picked this, this account planning customer recommendation area as a, as a way to get started and kind of test and try. You're talking about Oracle. For Oracle. Yeah. You're our Internally, yeah. Yeah, revenue operations department. Yeah. We picked that one area. I think for every business, it's a little different. But the, but the point is, find an area or two where you can you can get that low hanging fruit. You can get a small scale thing to get started, right? And get the benefit. Now, some of it will be maybe you take advantage of Juan's new generative application development. You build something brand new that you need. That could be one. Maybe it's Infusion or Netsuite where you say, oh, you know, we used to have this sub process with spreadsheets, and we had three people dumping data in. Now it's like voila, it's in the application. Or maybe it's, hey, we, we want to try something in hospitality and make a recommendation about, some, about a product or service when you, at time of check-in and you've got to do it in real time and AI can help give you a couple options, right? So there's a lot of different ways to go at this. Yeah. Um, I think it really depends on each individual company, but the point is try one or two of these things, right? Take a, you look across building it, the apps you have, and then some of these what I'll call edge domain cases where you can do something different. Yeah. I mean, Kendall's been taking all of my responses to her, putting them in an LLM so that she just knows what, what I'm going to say. Yeah. I actually have been doing that with Jason, too. Kendall GPT? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> my, my kids ask me all the They're like, Dad, you work for Oracle and you guys are in AI. So they ask me these obscure questions. <laughs> like, you have to, you know. as, as if I would know them. <laughs> Which I'm flattered that my yeah. kids actually still want to talk to me and ask me these questions. <laughs> so but I'm like, I am not Dad GPT. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I try. I do yeah. my best. Yeah. You were, you can fake it a little bit. I completely <laughs> fake it. All the time. Like, no, I know the answer. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Jason. This has been excellent talking about the Oracle AI playbook for business leaders. So appreciate you coming on.